Hello everyone, I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. We're here for a CUBE conversation in Palo Alto, and my guest here is Marshall Choi, Senior Director of System Solutions with Oracle. Uh, welcome to the CUBE conversation. Thanks, John. Oracle obviously is a huge, huge player in the enterprise and, and building business solutions for years. Legendary Larry Allison, CEO. We love covering Oracle, certainly the Oracle Open World is, is shuts down San Francisco, right. and the customer you have are, are huge. Um, and optimized solutions is the big trend. So my first question I want to ask you is, um, what is the, going on in the marketplace around Oracle's engineered solutions, the optimized solutions? What are you seeing as the big market trends? And we can come in some of the more specific solutions later. Right, yeah, I mean obviously, you know, the macro trends focus around you know, the usual suspects, right? Social, mobile, analytics, cloud, big data. Um, you know, as, as we see customers, you know, moving in those directions, clearly, you know, as we get a little more granular, things are focused on, you know, how do we how do we get information flowing? How do we get information flowing faster? How do we get better meaning out of this? Um, you know, and with regard to the solutions, customers are really just looking to accelerate their business and and get to market faster. Is what we're seeing. Is, you know, as I talk to customers across a you know a broad range of industries and, and geographies as well. Talk about the application and systems uh, collision that's happening. It's happening for mm -hmm. some time. Obviously, some people call it convergence. Some people call yep. it consumerization. Um, we're seeing a lot of things in cloud, for example, DevOps. What is that macro trend of those the to collision between the applications and the systems? And then how does Oracle fit into that sure. equation? Well, you know, you, we're seeing a blurring of the lines between those layers in the stack, and you know, you know, it, it's becoming a single system in many in many instances, right? And if I look at uh, you know what we're doing at Oracle specifically on the engineering side, we've got some very uh, you know very unique capabilities in that we've got uh, you know ownership and control of that whole stack of IP. So. Uh, from an optimized solutions perspective, um, puts us in a really good position to actually optimize at the layer of the stack where we can actually deliver the best efficiencies for our customers, and you know that can be in a number of forms, whether that be you know better performance, better availability, uh, better security, better manageability, and all trying to save them costs, uh, reduce their risk, and and uh, you know gain their efficiencies as well. Coming up on Oracle Open World this year, I think this will be our fourth year at Oracle Open World. We always go there. We always like to look at the transformation of Oracle itself, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, big fans of the company, obviously Larry Ellison, uh, a legend in Silicon Valley, still at the helm, and you know, as, as other titans are kind of retiring, he's still you know, the leader there. We love, it's, it's dramatic, it's got the flair, and, and sometimes we're super critical of Oracle, but when mm -hmm. you look at what Oracle's done, you guys pull a rabbit out of your hat every year, and we kind of joke that way. It's not necessarily pulling a rabbit like you're, you're changing the strategy. Right. Nothing's really changed. You guys have, you build on technology. So I gotta, I gotta ask you about things like cloud. You guys talk about it the next year, it's delivered. And so it's like, you guys hear from the customers, you deliver what people want, and, and that's, that's been great. So I gotta ask you about the role of Amazon has, has done in the enterprise. Amazon's become a lot like Oracle-like, fully mm -hmm. integrated stacks. Uh, that's kind of happening, so that kind of speaks to a direction of which you guys have a solution. And recently we were at the Open Compute Summit, mm -hmm. which is talking about people making their own hardwares. Hardware. So, in essence, isn't this what Oracle's been doing? I mean, this is the iPhone model. This is what Apple's been putting forth. So, this combination of hardware and software coming together, like the Open Compute Summit, OpenStack and the Enterprise for Cloud, and Amazon, how does all these trends relate specifically to Oracle, and, and how do you talk to your customers about that? Yeah, you know, it's, it's a good question, and you know, they're basically we're talking about different uh, procurement models, different financing models, and such, right? And when it comes down to it, with regard to Oracle, strategically, you know, we've got the the uh, the technologies and the products that uh, can play in any of these spaces, right? So you can ingest your Oracle IP in, in a number of forms, whether that be uh, you know, in the cloud, in a private cloud scenario, or as, as, as a combination of both public and private in the hybrid scenario. So uh, you know, as wor workloads move back and forth between those different models, uh, we're there to support our customers uh, with whatever their business decisions are at the time. How do you guys keep up with that trend? Because in, in essence, uh, one of the tweets we had on, on, our, on one of our crowd chats was, with the commoditization of components, the commoditization of hardware, with the commoditization of software and devices, how do we make any money? 
So this right. obviously brings up the margin pressure. So mm -hmm. you know, you're in, in an area where you're optimizing the solutions on Oracle, as, as, as they say, Oracle on Oracle, software on, on hardware, that integrated right. solution. Um, it's going to put margin pressure. So you know, how do you guys look at that, that, that from a perspective? Are you going to shift the value to the app side? Do apps ever get commoditized? I mean, some will argue. Mm -hmm. Applications, if it has value, will be paid for. So again, Oracle, as you integrate that in, how do you look at that from a margin, business, pricing perspective? Yeah, I mean, it's all about providing end user or customer value, right? And, you know, there's certain parts of the market where, you know, the, the margins are razor thin and, you know, the, it's a gunfight at the low end, for example, in, in, in the compute space. Um, you know, while we're happy to sell, sell systems in that space, we feel we can add significantly better value in something like an Oracle optimized solution for eBusiness Suite, which is our flagship ERP platform, right? So it's an aggregation of not only components from a hardware and software perspective, but the culmination of thousands of hours of testing uh, across both hardware and software. And by testing, I don't just mean functional testing. We're talking about uh, nightly fault injection testing, bi-weekly patch regression testing across the entire solution to enable our customers to have a very low risk deployment, save money, and get to market significantly faster. You know, a lot of people are criticizing the whole purpose-built approach uh, of the, what they call Red Stack at the time, mm -hmm. and, and now you guys are looking like geniuses doing that as everyone else tries to copy. Uh, you guys have huge install-based customers, so it's not like you're rolling out proof of concepts. You have huge businesses that are running on business software that has been Oracle from database, now fully stacked. How has the Sun component uh, accelerated that. Talk about some of the dynamics around, obviously Sun Microsystems, huge hardware yep. approach, and a lot of the Sun guys are still there, John <coughs> Fowler and among others, mm -hmm. they're all there. And so how does the software guys and the Sun guys work together? And talk about the kind of things that happen at Oracle from a best of breed standpoint. What does that right. generate? What does that enable from an app standpoint? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, Sun, as, a, as one of the newer assets of the Oracle portfolio, has provided us with a significant opportunity to, again, provide greater value to our customers. Um, you know, the typical industry arrangement of competing and cooperating uh, industry partners, you know, ISVs and ISVs, uh, you know, can, can provide a, a much less optimal solution. Um, we can certainly add signif significantly more value uh, to the overall solution uh, by combining those hardware and software properties. Now, you mentioned best of breed. We're absolutely still focused on building the best of breed individual components in both hardware and software. Um, the benefit of that, because we work as a single engineering team, across both end, uh, uh, software and hardware organizations. We can leverage that IP and those, those uh, learnings across the organization and build full stack solutions, right? Our engineered systems from a product standpoint are probably the best uh, example of that. Things like Exadata and the Oracle Supercluster, uh, which are very, you know, very much uh, uh, representations of the, the re-architecture and the re-engineering of how you would do database that provide orders of magnitude better performance and efficiency. And what's been some of the feedback from the customers as you guys do that? I mean, it's a different approach, but at the end of the day, it's the, the same wine in a different bottle, right? As they say, <laughs> expression, it's the, you know, the computing and solutions still have to run on a variety right. of different elements. So, although you may change the configuration, of what's, what's been the feedback from the customers on? Well received, um, where you guys think you need to do better? Talk about right. the customer reaction. Well, the customer reaction has been very strong. I mean, we have thousands of systems, uh, of engineered systems, thousands of optimized solutions deployed globally in all different industries um, and all different uh, selling territories and geographies. Um, you know, it, it's, it, th these are open systems, so you know, just as easily as you can migrate onto them, you can migrate off of them should you choose to. Uh, most customers are choosing to stay uh, as opposed to migrating off and, and having a more expensive, less efficient solution. Talk about, uh, to use the expression, sharpening the saw. Where, where does Oracle need to sharpen the saw? Where do you need to sharpen the saw and, and continue to innovate on an area that you guys focus on from a customer standpoint? Is there a, a, an area you're constantly improving on that you hear feedback on, or areas you think you need to do better? Sure. Um, you know, for, you know, uh, in, in the recent past, uh, one of the areas we've concentrated on significantly and made some great progress on uh, has been in the compute side with our Spark microprocessor. So, uh, you know, as Sun Microsystems was acquired by Oracle, 
Uh, we were in a position of, uh, of uh, lagging in the industry. Since then, we've come forward with uh, several microprocessor projects, which has effectively brought Oracle to the top of the race uh, uh, relative to the competition in, in the server category for best performance and price performance. We're, we're quite pleased with that. So Marshall, I got to ask you, actually we were talking before we came on to the CUBE conversation about, you know, you grew up in Silicon Valley, um, and you've seen the computer revolution uh, in, in its full swing, a variety of cycles. Yeah. We, we have uh, both are at that age where we've kind of seen that. So I got to ask you, um, given where Oracle is today and where they've come from, what's your take on how they translate to the cloud and big data? Because the cloud is the mainframe and the big mm -hmm. system in the sky, and and big data is just middleware, some say, right? Yep. Uh, if they want to oversimplify it. But, but really important trends, obviously it changed the economic landscape, which we right. talked about briefly about, but how does Oracle translate to the cloud and big data? Well, you know, at the end of the day, this is all about data and, and making meaningful use of data. And, you know, Oracle as the database company, we feel that we are primely positioned to, to add value for customers in that space, especially as we extend the capabilities in, 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 in things like analytics and unstructured data acquisition and categorization. Um, you know, the, the sky's the limit and you know, we think we're, we're, we'll be there for a long time. What's your take on the technology industry? I mean, back in the day, you know, when you had Larry and the competitors, I remember them mm -hmm. all giving up their speeches and talking about, you know, what the vision was for their growing companies. But you got maturity now, you have open source, you have a lot of consumer companies, but now enterprise is hot. So mm -hmm. what's your take of Silicon Valley, the technology ecosystem? What's your personal take? Not Oracle's official right. position, but you know, you've seen it. What's your take? Well, you know, I think, you know, the, the, the whole uh, phenomenon of BYOD or bring your own device is, you know, has significantly changed the landscape of IT and data centers in recent history. And, you know, as the new devices and wearable computing come into fashion, and, and you know, no pun intended there, but, uh, you know, we're, we're going to see, you know, even greater demands on, on, uh, on the infrastructure. Uh, you know, my kids, for example, think that waiting two seconds for a response is far too long, whereas, you know, in our generation <laughs> at that age, it was, you know, a week or so, right? So the attention span of the end users and, and the need for real-time analytics and data are only going to increase over time. And, uh, you know, 20, 30 years from now, who knows, uh, you know, what, what the future holds, but it, it's getting interesting. My co-host of theCUBE, Dave Vellante, and I always talk about, you know, the, the different approaches to computing, but the market's changing so fast that the build-outs and the, and the growth strategies are such that if it solves a problem, we'll take it, right? Mm -hmm. And certainly cloud gives you more flexibility. Um, so with that, what, what are you seeing with your customers? What are the key agility pain points do you guys see happening out there for them and what do you guys do to solve those problems? Yeah, you know, I mean, our customers are, you know, they're looking to keep pace with the comp with their competition and with, with you know, what's going on in, in, in the rest of the world and the economy, right? And so, it's really, how do I get a jump start on everybody else? How do I get there faster? That's the thing I hear constantly when I talk to customers. How do I get up and running faster? How do I deploy services faster? Bottom line, how do I generate ra that revenue faster and how do I add value to the business faster? So I got to ask you a final question on this CUBE conversation. Talk about what's next for Oracle Optimized Solutions as this collision of innovation happens between applications, hardware, and software come together, the purpose-built systems, integrated engineering. What's next, what's the next uh, mile marker for integrated solutions from a business and technology standpoint? Well, you know, as we look at the current portfolio of optimized solutions that cover, you know, a wide range of specific areas like ERP and HCM and, and CRM and such, uh, you know, we, we're obviously seeing a great convergence and aggregation of these types of business workflows. So, um, you know, the integration points between those systems and, and the, uh, the ancillary systems that connect them is really uh, what we're looking at in terms of the next stage of growth and optimized solutions and uh, you know, managing the entire life cycle of those solutions. Marshall Choi here for CUBE Conversations. This is John Furrier here in, in Palo Alto, California, heart of Silicon Valley uh, with CUBE Conversations. Thanks for watching. We good? <laughs>